what a great night of boxing. And this is what happens when you have fighters who are willing to get in there and um, fight other good fighters and trade with them and exchange with them. And this is what happens when you have uh, great matchmaking. And tonight was great matchmaking by top rank. Um, it was good that it was on ESPN. Hopefully um, some other people were exposed to some great fights. And these were entertaining fights tonight. Uh, the fight before this, Ramirez versus Hart, was very entertaining. Um, j just great action in that fight and great action in this fight. This was um, even more entertaining. Um, just a hell of a night of boxing. And once again, when you do great matchmaking, they had a great atmosphere there as well. I mean, this was old school. Great atmosphere. And I've heard this about uh, fight fans in Arizona. I know some people out in Phoenix who attend some uh, smaller cards out in Arizona, and they put on good cards out in Arizona, some good matchmaking, and uh, some great boxing fans out in Arizona in that part of the country. And you saw it come through the TV. There's some very good fight fans there. And this was <laughs> obviously something that was going to please them. Now, if you didn't see the fight, go watch it. All right, go watch it. It, it, it started off entertaining. Uh, Valdez was doing some very good work. And uh, Genesis Cervania, a guy who he has a what I call a Jermaine Taylor uh, syndrome, where he does a lot of um, a, a lot of unneeded action on the outside, where he's pawing at his face. You know, he, he's doing a lot of bobbing and weaving on the outside when he doesn't have to do it. You know, he, he's, he's pawing at his face with his glove. Doesn't have to be doing that stuff. So Zervania has a lot of nervous action uh, on the outside. And you saw that come through in the first two or three rounds where he was doing a lot of stuff that he didn't need to do. And he was easy to time. Valdez was timing him and, and just using his superior boxing skills to time Zervania. And, and by the way, Valdez won the fight on the scorecards. Let, let's get to that right off the bat. Um, and, and deservedly so. Um, I felt later on in the fight, he got, uh, he, he adjusted to some stuff and swept the, the later rounds and, and won the fight on the scorecards deservedly. So, but <laughs> he had some, uh, some turbulence in that round four. Now round four, what happened was Valdez has a very bad habit, you know, fun fighter to watch, good technical ability, some decent power. Uh, but he has a very bad habit of after he throws his combinations, he'll go back out and leave his hands completely down. And Cervania, uh, Cervania, whatever you want to call him, uh, caught him with a beautiful right hook as he was exiting after one of his combinations. And it, and, it, and it wasn't, um, it didn't uh, hurt Valdez bad. He, he popped right back up. He was smiling. You know, he, he was fine. He was fine. But he was a little wobbly. You saw it about 30 seconds later. Savannah so threw a, a straight right, and Valdez slipped it. But as he slipped it, you saw his legs were wobbly, and he started to wobble a little bit to the left. So Valdez was a little shaky on his legs after that knockdown in the fourth, but he handled it well. Uh, he popped right back up. But that's something he need, he's going to need to work on. He has a very bad habit of <laughs> leaving his hands down as he's coming out after he throws a combination. Um, and, and he kept doing it throughout the fight. Um, and if he's going to get in there with a, a Frampton or other top guys at, at featherweight, you know, Rigo's moving up, but if you were to get in there with a guy like Rigo or even, um, a Gary Russell Jr. or Abner Morris or, or, um, Leo Santa Cruz moving up and wait, that's stuff he's going to have to clean up. Um, and not saying he can't hang with those guys or beat those guys. That's not what I'm saying, but that's something he can, he can make his life a lot easier if he can clean that up. Gotta come out with your hands up. Uh, after your combinations, and, and Cervania was waiting for that and was catching him with some big shots as he was going out. Now, the good adjustment, the great adjustment that Val Valdez made in the middle rounds, um, first of all, let's get to that knockdown in the fifth round. Valdez caught, caught Cervania with a hellacious, hellacious shot in the fifth round, and how Cervania survived that, I have no idea. That was a hellacious shot, and, and I thought he was out. I thought he was out. He got up at about eight or nine, um, was still a little wobbly. And then Valdez comes out, shoots for, uh, um, swings, swings for the fences, um, was catching Cervania with some more hellacious shots. And Cervania not only doesn't wrap up, but he's throwing shots back. 
I'm like, what the hell is this guy made out of? These guys have great chins because Cervania was catching Valdez with some some beautiful shots to Valdez's chin. They were do both doing good body work as well, and Valdez was walking right through him. Uh, so very good action, very good uh, stuff from both fighters. But how Cervania got off the canvas and survived that fifth round, and not only survived it but came back and, and, and fought tough in the sixth and seventh as well, I have no idea. That's just great work, and, and props to both guys for having – um, <laughs> just, just great heart and, and, and just great stuff. But, um, Valdez made the, um, he adjusted, he made the great adjustment of, he was staying in there too long and getting greedy in the third, fourth, fifth rounds. And that's why he paid in the fourth round and, and was paying in the fifth round before he caught Val, uh, Cervania with a, a, a big shot, but he stopped being greedy. He stopped staying in there for four five, six and was doing one, two, three, and getting out of there. Still with his hands down, and still was getting caught a little bit, but, um, you know, he would get his, his 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 shots in, was getting his scoring in, and then moving out. Getting his scoring in, moving out, circling a little bit, and um, was not getting in as, as many exchanges per round. And that was the big adjustment that he made uh, to, in, in order to survive those middle rounds and then make it easier for him in the later rounds. And I felt he swept 8 through 12. 12 was some good action. Um, you could have scored that either way, I felt. But um, 8 through 11, uh, especially, 8 through 11 uh, were Valdez rounds, for sure, definitely. Uh, so so just good work from Valdez and adjusting. You saw what you wanted to see from him. You know, stuff he's got to clean up uh, technically, yes. Um, like I said, I pointed that out. Has to use a jab more as well. Um, more more movement on the outside, more head movement. Some stuff he needs to clean up, um, but we're nitpicking a little bit. And I, I just felt, you know, when you go down on the canvas, when you're fighting in your hometown, when you're fighting in front of your fans, uh, first big main event, uh, a lot of people watching, you're gonna you're gonna gamble a little bit early in the fight. You're trying to impress, trying to give the fans an entertaining fight. So he made some mistakes early, and he paid for it in the fourth round. Uh, but I felt like after that, he settled himself down, and he did what champions do. He survived that, came back, and <laughs> in the fifth round, he caught Cervania with the shot that 99% uh, of fighters. They're not getting up from that. But Cervania, somehow he got up from that and survived it. But Valdez showed patience, um, showed some good technical technical ability by adjusting and, and not staying in there in exchanges with Cervania as much um, and not making it harder on himself. He made it easier on himself. Um, he did what he had to do to get through those rounds and went on the scorecards. And he, he still gave the fight fans an entertaining fight. And, and like I said, man, at, at the beginning of the video, this is what happened. This is boxing at its best. And boxing is, is on a hot streak right now. When you match people perfectly, you know, when, when you do good matchups, good fights, entertaining fights between good fighters, and you put it where it makes sense geographically in front of uh, fight fans uh, who want to see it. This is this wasn't a Vegas fight where you have people showing up late and you have all, all the beautiful people who um, barely care about boxing showing up just to show their faces on camera. This is um, a fight where in front of real fight fans uh, who wanted to see their guy win but also appreciated the, the opponents as well and appreciate good action and it showed through the tv screen and um just great matchmaking and it's fighters stepping up to the plate seizing their opportunity and that's what happened tonight everybody's stock rose tonight valdez and he, valdez and ramirez in the co-main event and even um Cervania and hart showed a lot of heart um, and a lot of balls in, in their losses. And I want to see both of those guys again. And I, I think that's going to be across the board what a lot of people are going to say after watching these fights. Uh, so just good stuff all around, good action. Um, in, in the fight before the two co-main main events, Conlon, I think he's got a, he's an entertaining fighter, but he has a lot of stuff, definitely. And he, he's still young. Still, uh, as far as pro ranks go, he's still about two years away. Uh, he's got a lot of stuff he needs to clean up, and um, 
he's got a long way to go, but he is an entertaining fighter and a marketable fighter. So we'll see where Conlon goes from here as well. I, I heard they're going to put him on the um, Lomachenko Rigo undercard. So hopefully they bring him along quickly. Every couple months he fights, fights uh, six, seven times a year. Uh, up until they finally step him up and, and keep him active because they got to they got to move him along quickly because he's a two-time Olympian so he he turned pro late so they got to move him along quickly so hopefully they do that in, in about two years he he's in a big fight and we'll see what, what what's up with him but he's got a long way to go but as far as Valdez goes and Ramirez go they showed a lot tonight they showed a lot tonight um, yeah some stuff that 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 they need to work on however. They're there, man. They're, they're there. They're at the top um, of their division. Not not at the very top of their division, but close to it. Anywhere from um, in the top five, you can rank them somewhere up there. However, you have have them ranked, but they're there, man. They're there, and they're ready for the big fights. And hopefully, they get them. And um, <laughs> I'm sold on Valdez, man. I want to see more of them. Um, fun fighter to watch. And, and Ramirez in a fun fight tonight as well. So overall, just very pleased with the card. Very, very, very pleased with the ESPN card tonight. And um, want to see more of it. Great action. Great night of boxing. And a great year of boxing so far. Keep it up, man. Keep it up. Keep it up. So um, overall, Valdez, very good performance. Very good night of boxing. And Valdez beats Cervania on the cards. Let me know what y'all thought about this fight. One of these days, man, I'm going to figure out how to work this chat so I can see what people are, are chatting about. Um, but until then, y'all hit me up in the archive comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about this fight. I'm out. Peace.